Hi everyone and welcome you're watching Chai with Chaitanya I am Chaitanya and this is a place where I talk about books movies and fandom and today I'm here to talk about Shadow and Bone the Netflix show that just dropped yesterday and I happened to binge watch all the episodes in one day because it was really that good so let's just go and drive right into it I have actually not read the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Lee Bardugo but I had the chance to read and pick up Six of Crows which I particularly did not enjoy for the very fact that it requires people to be a little more uh, updated with what the world is and with Six of Crows Lee Bardugo doesn't give you enough time to set up the world from beginning and you are thrown right into the action and for that it gave me a uh, major major ocd because i was not able to grasp what is happening and i came very close to dnfing that book twice but i was able to you know read through that but anyway going back to the show so i went into this uh, being aware that this show had six of crows characters as well as the shadow and bone characters so i did have little bit of background for six of crows but i was not very sure that how the six of crows would tie into this because i know that the shadow and bone is a prequel that happens before the six of crows so um to give you a brief and if you are living under a rock so give you a quick synopsis of what this show is so you follow alina starkov in the place called ravaka which is very much influenced and inspired by russian setting so it's not exactly medieval but it's very medieval victorian like more victorian and less medieval but but yes it is sort of both and uh, you follow elena starkov's journey wherein she is going across the shadow fold now this world of ravaka has something called the shadow fold which basically this giant as wall made of completely of shadows and you have creatures dark creatures which live in there and most people don't really make out a life like you can like you know crossing the shadow fold is like a very big thing and not every single person or every single ship has is able to do that and so elena starkov and mal they both of these who are orphans they've grown up together and they go on this voyage to cross the fold and when they are on the journey just come in and that is when elena starkov that she is basically the sun bringer in layman's term and she has this ability to to you know she has this power inside of her that that basically is is like this is this energy from the sun of light and that is able to kill the darkness so basically the light is able to win over the darkness the goodness over the evil the concept that is there and um you know so we 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 follow her to see that how she go then goes and meets the darkling uh he wants elena starkov to join him and then uh help uh remove the shadow fold and elena starkov then realizes that she is a grisha now grisha are basically these people who have magical abilities but in the ravaka world they are uh looked down upon there is there is a certain sense of racism and classism that comes into the picture So that's more or less about Alina Starkov, and then we also have the Six of Crows character, Cas Brecker, Inage, and uh, Jasper. Only these three characters, and obviously you later also get to see Matthias and uh, Nina as well. But uh, going and talking about a little about Nina and Matthias a little later, talking about uh, these two first. So. their their stories actually start pretty much in the same way as it does in the book but it zoom becomes a little different from what is not there in the either of the books like not in the shadow and bone as well as in the six of crows duology so you get something which is completely new and it sort of does tie well into the plot and i'm very excited to see that where it's going so that's pretty much the synopsis of the show i'm sorry if this wasn't very consistent or very coherent because it's a it's a world which has too many things going on and i've tried my best to tell you now i will go and tell you what particularly i enjoyed and what i particularly had problems with really enjoyed the lush magical world of ravaka that we got to meet now as i said i was not a fan of the grisha world and i can't say that i'm a fan right now but i was very excited and very much interested after watching the show and that is to say that the magic system became way more clearer to me now that i now, now that i see it happening 
on screen versus reading it and um, I also enjoyed that how epic all of it was like how you were following different uh, you know sets of characters in different places for which a lot of people and a lot of early reviewers also you know compared the Six of uh, the Shadow and Bone with the Game of Thrones and obviously Game of Thrones has its own charm but I can tell you that why it may give you the Game of Thrones feels it's not the next Game of Thrones and I don't think anybody can compare anything to Game of Thrones because Game of Thrones is just next level shit but that is to say that this show was not bad this show has lots of interesting characters it has a lot going on and in eight episodes it is able to set up two books like not complete of the Six of Crows but at least a part of it and it's also able to you know talk mostly about the first book of the shadow and bone so, uh, one question that i consistently saw lots of people my friends asking me who have not read the books that will they understand this world if they've not watched the uh, you know if they've not read the series and this is where i have problems with the show uh, the show is set up in a way where it sort of uh, undertakes this fact that it makes you feel that you know you're already aware of what's going to happen so for the fans of the book this world was very easy to get into and for me also at least i think that the reason why i was able to pick up on a lot of things a lot of terms a lot of characters was because i had some sort of backdrop because i had read the six of crows but for most part for most of the shadow and bone part i think it is very confusing because i had tons of questions and despite the show actually trying to address these questions in, in a lot of ways here and there it still felt very jarring it still was very confusing and I'm not sure if if that is only something that I faced or if that's something that you guys faced as well but I think that if you've not read the books this show might feel tad bit little difficult to get into a little overwhelming considering the terms and all the world and the way it's set up but um, stick with it and you will soon learn to you know find characters that you really want to root for and um, you have lots of magic and lots of adventure and action and violence going in it so you will like it now the second thing that why I did not enjoy the show as much as everybody else sort of did was because of two reasons one I consistently felt that the shadow and bone uh, sections that is Alina Starkov and all the people who are a part of the shadow and bone uh, world their stories were not like the moment I was trying to get into their into their characters and into their stories, we there was a cut and we used to follow the Shadow and Bone, uh, the Six of Crows. I'm sorry, I'm confusing it so many times. The Six of Crows characters, and that was a major uh, challenge for me because every time I was trying to get invested into this one set of characters, there was a flip and there was a change, and I just felt that it was not consistent enough. And the second reason why I did not enjoy it was also to do pretty much a ties in with the first uh, point as well. That is to do with the pacing of the. Uh, uh, of, of the storytelling now the narrative is set in a way where as I said you're following different characters across different time zones and like no across different land zones not time zones the time is same and uh, like there are flashbacks so you do have that in a way as well now what I particularly have problems with uh, when it comes to pacing was that that the show started the first episode is very action-packed and you're just thrown right into the action and then from there on the second third and fourth have a very low dip in action and I think that was done probably because uh, the world was trying to be set up and you know the, the rising action had to be set up and you had to be given enough context as to what is happening and then suddenly again in the in the the second half of the second last episode and then the last episode there was a lot of action and I felt that the action therefore was very uh, you know it, it, it was it was paced in a way where it was not very consistent and I constantly felt this weird sort of tone that was you know that the pacing was very off for me um another thing that i have problems with was the way the cuts was used now this is not exactly uh, a problem with the story but it is as much as the fact that how um the whole narrative is chosen to go now we are following characters in a victorian medieval setting and in there when you have transitions where you know you go from like you know one you, you're seeing jesper and then you go zoop and then you go and see another thing that is happening so the fast cuts that have been used is very jarring and it's very disorienting for me because by default i want it to be 
you know smoothed out because i'm following a world which is very old and when there are such sharp cuts it just discombobulates me and it it throws me off balance and it makes me realize that i'm not a part of this world and i'm just seeing it and i'm not in there and that is something that was a major 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 issue and it was used so many times and so much of flashbacks and so many uh, you know cuts fast cuts were used that it constantly became an issue uh but apart from that i think i liked everything about shadow and bone i enjoyed it i did not think i would enjoy it so much as much as i did i'm very excited to see that where the series is going forward i will obviously not talk about spoilers but i i absolutely was convinced and i'm still a part of me still wants to see uh, alina and the darkling together but then um, but i'm also a huge shipper of alina and mal and i felt that alina's character is the most uh you know the the most uh influential character in in all the characters that are there i think that i constantly was rooting for her and mal apart from a little bit for jesper because he was really funny uh with kaz i have never liked him in the books for some reason like not that he's bad but that uh, you know he's obviously meant to be a morally gray character as most people have always pointed out but it's just something about kaz that i do not like and with inage i felt i was very neutral nina was fun and so was matthias with matthias casting i'm not very happy because the way i had imagined matthias or the way the matthias has been described in the books that this does not for some reason matches with the sort of casting that has been done so but so apart from that i think everything was out of the world it was very good uh, the magic system was lush it was very vivid it was very whimsical there was a lot going on and it's very b- addictive and you can binge it like binge all the episodes in one day if you want to if you're like me so yes you should definitely go and check out shadow and bone i gave it a 3.5 stars out of 5 and that's my review do let me know what you guys think about the casting about the characters and if you have read shadow and bone or if you've not read shadow and bone and how did the show uh, you know felt for you so bye and i'll see you super soon